Solving rational inequalities is much like solving quadratic inequalities. In a quadratic inequality, you had to get everything to the same side of the inequality so that you had zero on the other side. Then you turned it into an equation, you solved it so that you could find those critical values, and then we would either do test points or do a sign chart to figure out where our solution set was going to be. With rational inequalities, we need to get everything to one side of the inequality, create a single fraction, and then we're going to identify the critical values from this and use a sign chart to determine the solution set. Now the way we identify the critical values is by finding out what makes the numerator equal to zero and what makes the denominator equal to zero once you have it as a single fraction. So let's take a look at this guy. x plus five over three x minus seven is greater than or equal to zero. Well, everything's already on the same side of the inequality. You already have a single fraction. We just need to identify those critical values. So those critical values are going to be those values that make either the numerator or denominator equal to zero. So what makes the numerator equal to zero? Well, that would be negative five. What makes the denominator equal zero? Well, if you have a hard time seeing that, just take three X minus seven off to the side, set it equal to zero and solve it. And when you do that, you're gonna find out that X is equal to seven thirds. That is your other critical value. Now in terms of what a graph would look like for something that's rational, that's something that we save for a couple of chapters from now. So let's not worry about that. We're going to use a sign chart to figure out what does this look like. And remember when we do the sign chart we look at each individual factor, see what their signs do, and then we bring it all back together into a single expression and we just have to pay attention to the signs. We don't ever have to worry about how big or small the number is. It's all about is it positive or negative. Alright, so we draw the number line and we put our two marks here for our two critical values. These guys are already in order, so that's negative five and seven thirds. So you'll notice that the sign tables that we do here are no different from the ones we did for the quadratic inequalities. So for the factor x plus five, his critical value matches up with negative five. So he's zero right here. And since it's a positive lead coefficient, we know he's negative on the left. He crosses and becomes positive the rest of the way. Three x minus seven has a critical value of seven thirds. And he's going to be negative leading up to it he hits that critical value where he crosses the x-axis, and then he's positive after that. So region by region, let's see what we have. In this first region, you have two negative factors. So negative, even though this is division, they're still considered factors. So two negative factors is going to make that positive. Positive over a negative makes this guy negative. And then two positives is going to make that positive when you do the division. Be careful. See, now that we have these signs, we know we go positive, negative, positive. We think, oh, this is easy. But wait, those critical values are very important to us in terms of whether they come from the numerator or denominator. So this 7 thirds, I'm going to put a star next to it because it came from the denominator, which means this 0 is in the denominator. So in this expression, you'd have something that's a positive divided by a zero. Positive divided by zero, however, is undefined. So I'm gonna write UND there for undefined. Because remember, when zero is under the line, the expression is undefined. But this critical value came from the numerator. And you can do zero divided by a non-zero number. So zero divided by negative is going to be zero. So this expression goes through this particular sign pattern. He's positive, then zero, and then negative. Then it becomes undefined, and it becomes positive thereafter. So this original inequality says, where are you greater than or equal to zero? That means where are you positive or equal to zero? So I'm positive in this region, and I'm positive over here. And I can also equal zero at this guy. Wherever you are undefined, that is from a critical value that came from the denominator, 
he will never, ever, ever be included. Never. So just keep that in mind. So I'm talking about this region here that's to the left of negative 5, this to the right of 7 thirds, and since I'm including the 0, I get to include this endpoint right here. And now I translate this into my interval of notation. So the interval notation is going to be from negative infinity to negative 5 bracket because I, because I get to include negative 5. We've got this jump, so we're going to put the union sign right here. And then we come back, parentheses, 7 thirds to positive infinity. So one of these endpoints gets included, but the other one doesn't because he made the expression undefined. So this is how we work and solve rational inequalities.